Hello and welcome back to Drop the Box. Today I'm going to show you how to test a parasitic drain. So what is parasitic drain? Parasitic drain is a small current that has been drawn from the battery with the vehicle switched off. Now, you'll normally have a, complaint, a customer come in with the complaint that um, they've left the car for a few days and now their battery's flat and the car won't start, etc. They maybe put a new battery on there, um, a few more days again, it's happened again. Especially in this cold weather, it's quite a common issue. Tools that you will need, a multimeter and an amp clamp. And some patience. Before you do anything, always check the basics. Battery health state. So check the voltage and if you've got a battery tester, check the health of the battery. Check it's got enough current in the battery and it's fully charged to around 12.6 volts at a minimum. And also make sure that you test the vehicle is charging as well. So start the vehicle and test the vehicle, like we're going to do here. The first thing we're going to do is check the battery state of charge, as you should do before carrying out any electrical diagnostics or repair. As you can see by the multimeter, we're 12.5 volts. Now we're going to start the vehicle and check that the alternator is charging the battery. You can see there that's a healthy charge of 14.3 volts. To carry out the parasitic drain test, the vehicle needs to be in sleep mode. The vehicle goes into sleep mode once it's fully closed and locked, and then after about 20 to 30 minutes, it will enter sleep mode. This is when most of the control modules in the car will sort of go from being active into like sort of like a standby mode, so they're not drawing any power. Um, from anywhere and you'll have the bare minimum running. So in order to carry out our parasitic drain tests we're going to need access to the car. So we're, we're going to need to have access to under the bonnet and sometimes in the car as well. So we need to fool the car into thinking that the bonnet is closed, the doors are closed, the boot is closed. So this is how we're going to do that. The car senses the bonnet is open by this switch here. So what we're going to do to fool the car is cable tie it in the depressed position and then the car will think that the bonnet is closed. So the doors we're simply going to manually close the door catch. As you can see here the vehicle is now completely in sleep mode and it's, it's drawing hardly any amps at all. Point, point 0.1 of an amp if we're lucky. So this is how you know, a, a good vehicle should look like when it's fully in sleep mode uh, with no parasitic drain. Uh, however, this is you know, a 2008 car, so modern vehicles now will have more of a current draw when they're in sleep mode than this, maybe up to 0.4 of an amp. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the radio on to simulate um, a current load or parasitic drain. So. I will go turn the radio on and you should be able to see the amps change. As you can see now by the amp clamp, we're reading 0.9, maybe one one amp of current draw. So we're we're simulating uh, a parasitic drain, drain here. So for example, we've left we've left the radio on, and this is uh, our parasitic drain. And then over a space of a day or two, the battery will go flat. So if we didn't know that it was the radio, how would we test it? Well, there's there's two ways really. Uh, well, two ways that 
I normally do. You know, it's, it's probably other other ways and different methods that other people prefer. But these are the two methods I prefer. So you can leave the amp clamp on and then go pull fuses until the current drops. So if we pull a few of the audio fuses now, out now. Yeah, see it's already dropped now to 0.5. And if we pull the other one, it's dropped, dropped even further. So you get that sort of technique. You leave the amp clamp on, you go around pulling fuses until uh, the current draw changes and then that'll be the circuit where you need to continue your investigation. So that's method one. Amp clamp on, monitor the reading, go around pulling fuses one at a time until the current draw goes or drops. So this is the second method of testing for parasitic drain. I still like to have the amp clamp on just as like a, a backup or something I can quickly refer to just, just to have a look, look at the values. So you're testing in two ways by doing this. Um, so on your multimeter, you need to turn it to millivolts, which is there. And then you need to make sure that you're in DC. So we're in DC there. And as always, put the probes together to make sure it's zeros. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to test the fuses. There's two test points on each fuse. Well, some fuses there are. So, so what we're going to do is put one probe on each of the test points and then see what, how many millivolts we get in the multimeter. So on that one we've got point, point 0.7. On this one, find it. Is 1.1 and then on that one is 1.6 so if you get any readings on these fuses there's there's going to be current draw through them but we need to find out how much current draw draw we can find out how much current draw by referring to this table as you can see on the left hand side that's our millivolt measurements that we measured with the multimeter. And so all you do is cross-reference it then uh, with the rest of the table. So what I'm doing now is scrolling down to um, the fuse we tested. So we tested the mini fuse. So again, we'll go to the left-hand side, have a look at what our measurements were for the millivolts, uh, and then cross-reference it with the fuse. So the first one was 0.7 millivolts and we had a 7.5 amp fuse so that's 65 uh, milliamps and that's the second fuse that was 1.1 millivolts and that's 343 milliamps and the last one we measured was 1.6 millivolts and that came in at 147 milliamps. If we add all these three values together it gives us about 0 0.6 amps and if we add the sleep mode uh, value as well of what was that, about 0 0.2 that'll give us a total of 0 0.8 and when we compare that to the amp clamp value which was 0 0.9 that's a really close value and like I said earlier the amp clamp isn't going to be the most accurate this is. So to summarize Method one, the amp clamp method. You need to take your amp clamp, put it around the negative cables of the battery, and then monitor that for how much current draw is being drawn through the battery with the vehicle in sleep mode. Whilst monitoring, go to your fuse pal and start pulling fuses one by one to see when the current drops on your amp clamp. And then when it drops, that's the circuit you've then got to go and carry out further fault finding guides. You will need uh, wiring diagrams to work this out. You need to find the fuse that you pulled and then slowly make your way down the circuit, disconnecting the components until that current draw go goes with the fuse back in the vehicle. The second method, which is the multimeter method, my preferred method, same again, get the vehicle into sleep mode 
and then test each fuse individually with the multimeter set to millivolts DC. Uh, when, when you start to re receive uh, readings on your multimeter, uh, you can use the table then that I showed you earlier um, to translate uh, the millivolts into how much current has been drawn. You can do it manually using Ohm's law, but as soon as you say Ohm's law, that's everyone now turning off. So use the table, it's there to convenience you, and you know, when you're in a garage environment, time is of the essence. And well, that's it. I hope uh, you've liked the video and found it useful. Um, anything you want to see in the future, please leave a comment and we'll see what we can knock up. And as always, uh, please like and subscribe. Thanks again.